Market socialism is a type of economic system involving the public, cooperative or social ownership of the means of production in the framework of a market economy. Market socialism differs from non-market socialism in that the market mechanism is utilized for the allocation of capital goods and the means of production. Depending on the specific model of market socialism, profits generated by socially owned firms i.e. net revenue not reinvested into expanding the firm may variously be used to directly remunerate employees, accrue to society at large as the source of public finance or be distributed amongst the population in a social dividend. Market socialism is distinguished from the concept of the mixed economy because unlike the mixed economy, models of market socialism are complete and self-regulating systems. Market socialism also contrasts with social democratic policies implemented within capitalist market economies. While social democracy aims to achieve greater economic stability and equality through policy measures such as taxes, subsidies, and social welfare programs, market socialism aims to achieve similar goals through changing patterns of enterprise ownership and management. Although economic proposals involving social ownership with factor markets have existed since the early 19th century, the term market socialism only emerged in the 1920s during the socialist calculation debate. Contemporary market socialism emerged from the debate on socialist calculation during the early to mid-20th century among socialist economists who believed that a socialist economy could neither function on the basis of calculation in natural units nor through solving a system of simultaneous equations for economic coordination, and that capital markets would be required in a socialist economy. Early models of market socialism trace their roots to the work of Adam Smith and the theories of classical economics, which consisted of proposals for cooperative of enterprises operating in a free market economy. The aim of such proposals was to eliminate exploitation by allowing individuals to receive the full product of their labor while removing the market-distorting effects of concentrating ownership and wealth in the hands of a small class of private owners. Among early advocates of market socialism were the Ricardian socialist economists and mutualist philosophers. In the early 20th century, Oscar Lange and Abba Lerner outlined a neoclassical model of socialism which included a role for a central planning board CPB in setting prices equal to marginal cost to achieve Pareto efficiency. Even though these early models did not rely on genuine markets, they were labeled market socialist for their utilization of financial prices and calculation. In more recent models proposed by American neoclassical economists, public ownership of the means of production is achieved through public ownership of equity and social control of investment. Topic: Theoretical history. Topic: Classical economics. The key theoretical basis for market socialism is the negation of the underlying expropriation of surplus value present in other, exploitative, modes of production. Socialist theories that favored the market date back to the Ricardian socialists and anarchist economists, who advocated a free market combined with public ownership or mutual ownership of the means of production. Proponents of early market socialism include the Ricardian socialist economists, the classical liberal philosopher John Stuart Mill and the anarchist philosopher Pierre-Joseph Proudhon. These models of socialism entailed perfecting or improving the market mechanism and free price system by removing distortions caused by exploitation, private property and alienated labor. This form of market socialism has been termed free market socialism because it does not involve planners. Topic. John Stuart Mill Mill's early economic philosophy was one of free markets. Later he altered his views toward a more socialist bent, adding chapters to his principles of political economy in defense of a socialist outlook, and defending some socialist causes. Within this revised work he also made the radical proposal that the whole wage system be abolished in favor of a cooperative wage system. Nonetheless, some of his views on the idea of flat taxation remained, albeit altered in the third edition of the Principles of Political Economy to reflect a concern for differentiating restrictions on unearned incomes, which he favored, and those on earned incomes, which he did not favor. Mill's Principles, first published in 1848, was one of the most widely read of all books on economics in the period. As Adam Smith's Wealth of Nations had during an earlier period, Mill's principles dominated economics teaching. 
In the case of Oxford University it was the standard text until 1919, when it was replaced by Marshall's Principles of Economics. Mill promoted substituting capitalist businesses with worker cooperatives. He says, the form of association, however, which if mankind continue to improve, must be expected in the end to predominate, is not that which can exist between a capitalist as chief, and work people without a voice in the management, but the association of the laborers themselves on terms of equality, collectively owning the capital with which they carry on their operations, and working under managers elected and removable by themselves. Topic. Mutualism. Pierre Joseph Proudhon developed a theoretical system called mutualism, which attacks the legitimacy of existing property rights, subsidies, corporations, banking, and rent. Proudhon envisioned a decentralized market where people would enter the market with equal power, negating wage slavery. Proponents believe that cooperatives, credit unions, and other forms of worker ownership would become viable without being subject to the state. Market socialism has also been used to describe some individualist anarchist works which argue that free markets help workers and weaken capitalists. American anarchism For American anarchist historian Eunice Manette Schuster, IT is apparent that Proudhonian anarchism was to be found in the United States at least as early as 1848 and that it was not conscious of its affinity to the individualist anarchism of Josiah Warren and Stephen Pearl Andrews. William B. Green presented this Proudhonian mutualism in its purest and most systematic form. Josiah Warren is widely regarded as the first American anarchist, and the four-page weekly paper he edited during 1833, The Peaceful Revolutionist, was the first anarchist periodical published, an enterprise for which he built his own printing press, cast his own type, and made his own printing plates. Warren was a follower of Robert Owen and joined Owen's community at New Harmony, Indiana. Josiah Warren termed the phrase, cost the limit of price, with cost here referring not to monetary price paid but the labor one exerted to produce an item. Therefore, H.E. proposed a system to pay people with certificates indicating how many hours of work they did. They could exchange the notes at local time stores for goods that took the same amount of time to produce. He put his theories to the test by establishing an experimental labor for labor store called the Cincinnati Time Store where trade was facilitated by notes backed by a promise to perform labor. The store proved successful and operated for three years after which it was closed so that Warren could pursue establishing colonies based on mutualism. These included Utopia and Modern Times. Warren said that Stephen Pearl Andrews' The Science of Society, published in 1852, was the most lucid and complete exposition of Warren's own theories. Later Benjamin Tucker fused the economics of Warren and Proudhon and published these ideas in Liberty calling them anarchistic socialism. Tucker said, T he fact that one class of men are dependent for their living upon the sale of their labor, while another class of men are relieved of the necessity of labor by being legally privileged to sell something that is not labor. And to such a state of things I am as much opposed as any one. But the minute you remove privilege, every man will be a laborer exchanging with fellow laborers. What anarchistic socialism aims to abolish is usury, it wants to deprive capital of its reward. <laughs> Neoclassical economics <laughs> <laughs> Early 20th century Beginning in the early 20th century, neoclassical economic theory provided the theoretical basis for more comprehensive models of market socialism. Early neoclassical models of socialism included a role for a central planning board CPB in setting prices equal marginal cost to achieve Pareto efficiency. Even though these early models did not rely on genuine markets, they were labeled market socialist for their utilization of financial prices and calculation. Alternative outlines for market socialism involve models where socially owned enterprises or producer co-operatives operate within free markets under the criterion of profitability. 
In recent models proposed by American neoclassical economists, public ownership of the means of production is achieved through public ownership of equity and social control of investment. The earliest models of neoclassical socialism were developed by Leon Walra, Enrico Barone and Oscar R. Lang Lang and Fred M. Taylor proposed that central planning boards set prices through trial and error, making adjustments as shortages and surpluses occurred rather than relying on a free price mechanism. If there were shortages, prices would be raised, if there were surpluses, prices would be lowered. Raising the prices would encourage businesses to increase production, driven by their desire to increase their profits, and in doing so eliminate the shortage. Lowering the prices would encourage businesses to curtail production to prevent losses, which would eliminate the surplus. Therefore, it would be a simulation of the market mechanism, which Lang thought would be capable of effectively managing supply and demand, although the Lang learner model was often labeled as market socialism. It is better described as market simulation because factor markets did not exist for the allocation of capital goods. The objective of the Lang learner model was explicitly to replace markets with a non market system of resource allocation. H. D. Dickinson published two articles proposing a form of market socialism price formation in a socialist community, The Economic Journal 1933, and The Problems of a Socialist Economy, The Economic Journal 1934. Dickinson proposed a mathematical solution whereby the problems of a socialist economy could be solved by a central planning agency. The central agency would have the necessary statistics on the economy, as well as the capability of using statistics to direct production. The economy could be represented as a system of equations. Solution values for these equations could be used to price all goods at marginal cost and direct production. Hayek 1935 argued against the proposal to simulate markets with equations. Dickinson 1939 adopted the Lang-Taylor proposal to simulate markets through trial and error. The Lang-Dickinson version of market socialism kept capital investment out of the market. Lang 1926 p. 65 insisted that a central planning board would have to set capital accumulation rates arbitrarily. Lang and Dickinson saw potential problems with bureaucratization in market socialism. According to Dickinson, "...the attempt to check irresponsibility will tie up managers of socialist enterprises with so much red tape and bureaucratic regulation that they will lose all initiative and independence." Dickinson 1938 p. 214. In The Economics of Control 1944, Abba Lerner admitted that capital investment would be politicized in market socialism. Topic. Late 20th century Economists active in the former Yugoslavia, including Czech-born Jaroslav Vanek and Croat-born Branko Horvat, promoted a model of market socialism dubbed the Illyrian model, where firms were socially owned by their employees and structured on workers' self-management and competed with each other in open and free markets. American economists in the latter half of the 20th century developed models based such as coupon socialism by the economist John Romer and economic democracy by the philosopher David Schweikert. Pranab Bardhan and John Romer proposed a form of market socialism where there was a stock market that distributed shares of the capital stock equally among citizens. In this stock market, there is no buying or selling of stocks, which leads to negative externalities associated with a concentration of capital ownership. The Barton and Romer model satisfied the main requirements of both socialism workers own all the factors of production, not just labor and market economies prices determine efficient allocation of resources. A New Zealand economist, Stephen O'Donnell, expanded on the Barton and Romer model and decomposed the capital function in a general equilibrium system to take account of entrepreneurial activity in market socialist economies. O'Donnell 2003 set up a model that could be used as a blueprint for transition economies, and the results suggested that although market socialist models were inherently unstable in the long term, in the short term they would provide the economic infrastructure necessary for a successful transition from planned to market economies. In the early 21st century, the Marxian economist Richard D. Wolff refocused Marxian economics giving it a microfoundational focus. 
The core idea was that transition from capitalism to socialism required the reorganization of the enterprise from a top-down hierarchical capitalist model to a model where all key enterprise decisions what, how, and where to produce and what to do with outputs were made on a one-worker, one-vote basis. Wolf called them workers' self-directed enterprises WSDEs. How they would interact with one another and with consumers was left open to democratic social decisions and could entail markets or planning or likely mixtures of both. Anti-equilibrium economics Another form of market socialism has been promoted by critics of central planning and generally, of neoclassical general equilibrium theory. The most notable of these economists were Alec Nove and Janos Kornai. In particular, Alec Nove proposed what he called feasible socialism, a mixed economy consisting of state-run enterprises, autonomous publicly owned firms, cooperatives and small-scale private enterprise operating in a market economy that included a role for macroeconomic planning. In practice A number of market socialist elements have existed in various economies. The economy of the former Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia is widely considered to be a model of market-based socialism, which was based on the predominance of socially owned cooperatives, worker self-management and market allocation of capital. Some of the economic reforms introduced by leader of Czechoslovakia Alexander Dubček during the Prague Spring included elements of market socialism. The Mondragon Cooperative Corporation in the Basque Country and Coop Corporation in Italy are widely cited as highly successful cooperative enterprises based on worker or consumer ownership and democratic management. Peter Drucker described the U.S. system of regulated pension funds providing capital to financial markets as pension fund socialism. William H. Simon characterized pension fund socialism as a form of market socialism, concluding that it was promising but perhaps with prospects more limited than those envisioned by its enthusiasts. The modern Cuban economy under the rule of Raul Castro has been described as attempting market socialist reforms, similar policies to the market socialist proposal of a social dividend and basic income scheme have been implemented on the basis of public ownership of natural resources in Alaska, Alaska Permanent Fund, and in Norway, the Government Pension Fund of Norway. Belarus ruled by Alexander Lukashenko is described as market socialist Topic. Relation to political ideologies Topic. Marxism-Leninism The phrase, ''market socialism'' has occasionally been used in reference to any attempt by a Soviet-type planned economy to introduce market elements into its economic system. In this sense, market socialism was first attempted during the 1920s in the Soviet Union as the New Economic Policy before being abandoned. Later, elements of market socialism were introduced in Hungary where it was nicknamed goulash communism. Czechoslovakia and Yugoslavia see Titoism in the 1970s and 1980s. The contemporary economy of Belarus has been described as a market socialist system. The Soviet Union attempted to introduce a market system with its perestroika reforms under Mikhail Gorbachev. During the later stages there was talk within top circles that the USSR should move toward a market-based socialist system. Historically, these kinds of market socialist Systems attempt to retain state ownership of the commanding heights of the economy, such as heavy industry, energy, and infrastructure, while introducing decentralized decision-making and giving local managers more freedom to make decisions and respond to market demands. Market socialist systems also allow private ownership and entrepreneurship in the service and other secondary economic sectors. The market is allowed to determine prices for consumer goods and agricultural products, and farmers are allowed to sell all or some of their products on the open market and keep some or all of the profit as an incentive to increase and improve production. Topic. Socialism with Chinese characteristics The term market socialism has been used to refer to reformed economic systems in Marxist-Leninist states, most notably in reference to the contemporary economy of the People's Republic of China, where a free price system is used for the allocation of capital goods in both the state and private sectors. 
However, Chinese political and economic proponents of the socialist market economy do not consider it to be a form of market socialism in the neoclassical sense and many Western economists and political scientists question the degree to which this model constitutes a form of market socialism, often preferring to describe it as state capitalism. Although similar in name, market socialism differs markedly from the socialist market economy and socialist-oriented market economy. Models practiced in the Contemporary People's Republic of China and Socialist Republic of Vietnam, respectively. Officially these economic systems represent market economies that are in the long-term process of transition toward socialism. Key differences between models of market socialism and the Chinese and Vietnamese models include the role of private investment in enterprises, the lack of a social dividend or basic income system to equitably distribute state profits among the population, and the existence and role of financial markets in the Chinese model, markets which are absent in the market socialist literature. The Chinese experience with socialism with Chinese characteristics is frequently referred to as a socialist market economy, where the commanding heights are state owned but a substantial portion of both the state and private sectors of economy are governed by free market practices including a stock exchange for trading equity and the utilization of indirect macroeconomic market mechanisms ie fiscal monetary and industrial policies to influence the economy in the same manner governments affect the economy in capitalist economies the free market is the arbitrator for most economic activity, with economic planning being relegated to macroeconomic government indicative planning that does not encompass the microeconomic decision making that is left to the individual organizations and state owned enterprises. This model includes a significant amount of privately owned firms that operate as a business for profit, but only for consumer goods and services. In the Chinese system, directive planning based on mandatory output requirements and quotas were displaced by free market mechanisms for most of the economy, including both the state and private sectors, although the government engages in indicative planning for large state enterprises. In comparison with the Soviet-type planned economy, the Chinese socialist market model is based on the corporatization of state institutions, transforming them into joint stock companies. As of 2008, there were 150 state-owned corporations directly under the central government. These state-owned corporations have been reformed and become increasingly dynamic and a major source of revenue for the state in 2008, leading the economic recovery in 2009 during the wake of the global financial crises. This economic model is defended from a Leninist perspective, which states that a planned socialist economy can only emerge after first developing the basis for socialism through the establishment of a market economy and commodity exchange economy, and that socialism will only emerge after this stage has exhausted its historical necessity and gradually transforms itself into socialism. Proponents of this model argue that the economic system of the former USSR and its satellite states attempted to go from a natural economy to a planned economy by decree, without passing through the necessary market economy phase of development. <laughs> Democratic socialism Some democratic socialists advocate forms of market socialism, some of which are based on self-management, while others advocate for a non-market participatory economy based on decentralized economic planning. Anarchism The French philosopher Pierre-Joseph Proudhon is the first person to call himself an «anarchist» and considered among its most influential theorists. He is considered by many to be the father of anarchism. He became a member of the French parliament after the revolution of 1848, whereon he referred to himself as a federalist. His best known assertion is that property is theft, contained in his first major work, What is Property? or, An Inquiry into the Principle of Right and Government Recherche sur le principe du droit et du gouvernement, published in 1840. The book's publication attracted the attention of the French authorities. It also attracted the scrutiny of Karl Marx, who started a correspondence with its author. The two influenced each other, they met in Paris while Marx was exiled there. Their friendship finally ended when Marx responded to Proudhon's The System of Economic Contradictions, or The Philosophy of Poverty with the provocatively titled The Poverty of Philosophy. The dispute became one of the sources of the split between the anarchist and Marxian wings of the International Working Men's Association. 
Mutualism is an economic theory and anarchist school of thought that advocates a society where each person might possess a means of production, either individually or collectively, with trade representing equivalent amounts of labor in the free market. Integral to the scheme was the establishment of a mutual credit bank that would lend to producers at a minimal interest rate, just high enough to cover administration. Mutualism is based on a labor theory of value that holds that when labor or its product is sold, in exchange, it ought to receive goods or services embodying the amount of labor necessary to produce an article of exactly similar and equal utility. Mutualism originated from the writings of philosopher Pierre Joseph Proudhon. Mutualists oppose the idea of individuals receiving an income through loans, investments, and rent, as they believe these individuals are not laboring. Though Proudhon opposed this type of income, he expressed that he had never intended to forbid or suppress, by sovereign decree, ground rent and interest on capital. I think that all these manifestations of human activity should remain free and voluntary for all, I ask for them no modifications, restrictions or suppressions, other than those which result naturally and of necessity from the universalization of the principle of reciprocity which I propose insofar as they ensure the workers' right to the full product of their labor, mutualists support markets or artificial markets and property in the product of labor. However, they argue for conditional titles to land, whose ownership is legitimate only so long as it remains in use or occupation which Proudhon called possession, thus advocating personal property, but not private property. Josiah Warren is widely regarded as the first American anarchist, and the four-page weekly paper he edited during 1833, The Peaceful Revolutionist, was the first anarchist periodical published. For American anarchist historian Eunice Manette Schuster, it is apparent less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 that Proudhonian anarchism was to be found in the United States at least as early as 1848 and that it was not conscious of its affinity to the individualist anarchism of Josiah Warren and Stephen Pearl Andrews William B. Green presented this Proudhonian mutualism in its purest and most systematic form Later the American individualist anarchist Benjamin Tucker was against both the state and capitalism, against both oppression and exploitation. While not against the market and property he was firmly against capitalism as it was, in his eyes, a state-supported monopoly of social capital tools, machinery, etc. which allows owners to exploit their employees, i.e. to avoid paying workers the full value of their labor. He thought that the Laboring classes are deprived of their earnings by usury in its three forms, interest, rent and profit. Therefore, liberty will abolish interest, it will abolish profit, it will abolish monopolistic rent, it will abolish taxation, it will abolish the exploitation of labor, it will abolish all means whereby any laborer can be deprived of any of his product. This stance puts him squarely in the libertarian socialist tradition and, unsurprisingly, Tucker referred to himself many times as a socialist and considered his philosophy to be a narchistic socialism. French individualist anarchist Émile Armand shows clearly opposition to capitalism and centralized economies when he said that the individualist anarchist Inwardly he remains refractory, fatally refractory, morally, intellectually, economically the capitalist economy and the directed economy, the speculators and the fabricators of single systems are equally repugnant to him." He argued for a pluralistic economic logic when he said that, "...here and there everything happening, here everyone receiving what they need, there each one getting whatever is needed according to their own capacity." Here, gift and barter, one product for another, there, exchange, product for representative value. Here, the producer is the owner of the product, there, the product is put to the possession of the collectivity." The Spanish individualist anarchist Miguel Jiménez Igualada thought that quote, quote, Capitalism is an effect of government, the disappearance of government means capitalism falls from its pedestal vertiginously. That which we call capitalism is not something else but a product of the state, within which the only thing that is being pushed forward is profit, good or badly acquired. And so to fight against capitalism is a pointless task, since be it state capitalism or enterprise capitalism, as long as government exists, exploiting capital will exist. The fight, but of consciousness, is against the state. 
His view on class division and technocracy are as follows. Since when no one works for another, the profiteer from wealth disappears, just as government will disappear when no one pays attention to those who learned four things at universities and from that fact they pretend to govern men. Big industrial enterprises will be transformed by men in big associations in which everyone will work and enjoy the product of their work. And from those easy as well as beautiful problems anarchism deals with and he who puts them in practice and lives them are anarchists. The priority which without rest an anarchist must make is that in which no one has to exploit anyone, no man to no man, since that non-exploitation will lead to the limitation of property to individual needs. Left-wing market anarchism, a form of left libertarianism and individualist anarchism is associated with scholars such as Kevin Carson, Roderick T. Long, Charles Johnson, Brad Spangler, Samuel Edward Konkin III, Sheldon Richman, Chris Matthew Shabara and Gary Chartier, who stress the value of radically free markets, termed freed markets to distinguish them from the common conception which these libertarians believe to be riddled with statist and capitalist privileges. Referred to as left-wing market anarchists or market-oriented left libertarians, proponents of this approach strongly affirm the classical liberal ideas of self-ownership and free markets, while maintaining that, taken to their logical conclusions, these ideas support anti-capitalist, anti-corporatist, anti-hierarchical, pro-labor positions in economics, anti-imperialism in foreign policy, and thoroughly liberal or radical views regarding such cultural issues as gender, sexuality, and race. The genealogy of contemporary market-oriented left libertarianism, sometimes labeled left-wing market anarchism overlaps to a significant degree with that of Steiner Valentine left libertarianism as the roots of that tradition are sketched in the book The Origins of Left Libertarianism. Carson Long style left libertarianism is rooted in 19th century mutualism and in the work of figures such as Thomas Hodgkin and the individualist anarchists Benjamin Tucker and Lysander Spooner. While with notable exceptions market-oriented libertarians after Tucker tended to ally with the political right, relationships between such libertarians and the new left thrived in the 1960s, laying the groundwork for modern left-wing market anarchism. Left-wing market anarchism identifies with left libertarianism or left-wing libertarianism which names several related but distinct approaches to politics, society, culture, and political and social theory, which stress both individual freedom and social justice. Unlike right libertarians, they believe that neither claiming nor mixing one's labor with natural resources is enough to generate full private property rights and maintain that natural resources land, oil, gold and trees ought to be held in some egalitarian manner, either unowned or owned collectively. Those left libertarians who support private property do so under the condition that recompense is offered to the local community. Topic see also Distributism New Economic Mechanism Social Market Economy Socialist Oriented Market Economy Titoism Topic References Topic Further reading Alejandro Agafonau The Austrian Dehomogenization Debate, or the Possibility of a Hayekian Planner, Review of Political Economy, Volume 24, No. 02. Chartier, Gary, Johnson, Charles W. Markets Not Capitalism, Individualist Anarchism Against Bosses, Inequality, Corporate Power, and Structural Poverty. Brooklyn, NY, Minor Compositions, Autonomedia Bertel Almond ed., 1998. Market Socialism, The Debate Among Socialists, with other contributions by James Lawler, Hillel Tickton and David Shevikert. Preview. Stephen O'Donnell, 2003. Introducing Entrepreneurial Activity into Market Socialist Models, University Press, Auckland John E. Romer et al., E. O. Wright, ed., 1996. Equal Shares, Making Market Socialism Work, Verso. Alec Nove, 1983. The Economics of Feasible Socialism, HarperCollins. David Miller, 1989. Market, State, and Community, Theoretical Foundations of Market Socialism, Clarendon Press, Oxford. David Schweikert 2002. After Capitalism, Roman and Littlefield, Lanham, Maryland. Johanna Bachmann 2011. Markets in the Name of Socialism, The Left-Wing Origins of Neoliberalism, Stanford University Press, Stanford. Preview. 